The TCU season has been up and down so far, but with a win tonight against Houston, if they can do that, they will be four and two going into a bye week with a big game with Utah looming in a couple of weeks. I'll talk about how big that will be next here on Lockdown Horn Frogs, your team every day. You are Locked On Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's right, Locked On Horn Frogs. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, also available on your favorite podcast platform. A couple of housekeeping notes. One, sorry for the timing of this. Uh, I actually had an interview scheduled for today, and I was going to do it and then get it the episode out this morning, but the person that I was going to talk to just kind of no-showed on me. So uh, I sort of had to scramble to get some content out today on game day. And then we'll have a post-game show tonight. I'm not sure if it's going to be right after the game because I have some other work responsibilities going on with high school football. But I'll be in tune. I'll be watching the TCU game. And then when I'm available, there'll be a post-game show. It'll definitely be up before Saturday morning. So you can watch it tomorrow before you, you know, indulge in a full day of college football. But tonight – TCU in Houston. Uh, Frogs have a chance to go four and two going into the bye week. And my prediction is that TCU wins tonight. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be a blowout because, listen, Houston struggled this year. They're one and four. Their one win was against Rice. They're averaging 10 points a game. If you take out that scoring barrage against Rice where they put up 33 or 34 points, I believe they're averaging four points in their other ball games. The pass offense has been really bad. Now, that being said, TCU's defense has struggled at times, and they've really struggled against the run. So I don't think it's any secret what Houston wants to do. They want to run the ball with Stacey Sneed. They're going to run the ball with Donovan Smith. They'll bring in Zion Chris at times, the transfer from Louisiana, big physical quarterback. And they're going to have him run the football as well. And it'll be up to TCU to stop it and put them in third down situations. And really the key to me, well, there's multiple keys, and I'll I'll get to them here in a second. But the biggest key for the defense, Houston has struggled mightily on third downs, as you would expect an offense that is floundering to do. They haven't been able to sustain drives. They go at a very slow pace. I believe the only team that has had less plays than them so far this year is Kentucky. They are trying to bleed the clock. Willie Fritz understands what he has. They're limited on offense. Their defense has been pretty salty so far. So they're going to try to not allow TCU to have a lot of possessions. So my key is the ball game. First is defense has to get off the field on third down. And really that starts with winning first and second down. Put Houston in situations where they're forced to throw the football. The pass rush against Stanford looked really good for TCU, I'm talking about. And at the time, it was like, man, maybe this is a sign of things to come. They haven't been able to really replicate that since then. But one of the big problems is if you're not putting teams in obvious passing downs, then it's difficult for your pass rushers to win those one-on-one matchups. And it's difficult to bring pressure and expect that you can get home and disrupt things if you feel like teams can run the ball on you. Last week, I think overall they did a better job, the defense just in general. I also believe that Jeff Grimes kind of got away from the run game mysteriously, and that helped him out a little bit. But by and large – you just have to force Houston to throw the ball. And you got to put Donovan Smith in situations where he has to extend drives with his arm. I wonder what the rotation is going to look like at corner this week. I would expect more Channing Canada. Quietly, Lamarian James is having a really good season. The Old Dominion transfer. He had the one-handed pick against Kansas, which was one of his first, like, oh, man, that's a that's a splash play, right? He had a good game against Stanford. There were times when he was at matched up with A.O. Maynar, and he did a nice job against him. You don't hear his name a lot, though, and I mean that in a good way because corners similar to offensive linemen, if you're not hearing them being called out on a consistent basis, that means that teams aren't challenging them and they're doing a good job, 
you know, guarding their man, taking care of their assignment. So put Houston in those passing situations, because if you don't and you allow them to convert first downs and keep drives going, then they're going to sit on the ball and they're going to try to bleed that clock as much as possible. I mean, Houston's recipe to win this game is they got to slop it up and make it a rock fight. So what they did against Oklahoma was some success. They didn't win that game, but it was one score game going into the fourth quarter. They hung around with Iowa State for a while, but that was more on the backs of their defense, just playing really well and kind of standing on their head. It wasn't so much the offense being successful. But if you if you allow them to stay on the field and get first downs, then the issue becomes that's less time for your offense to be out there and score points. And so it, it's a huge key to put them in third and long and then get off the field when you do. Because TCU struggled at times in those third and long situations. And surprisingly, it's it's been in the run game some of the time. Like Stanford – or excuse me, not Stanford. SMU popped a few run plays for them on like third and 14, third and 12. Kansas did that a little bit last week. So get after Houston – force them into uncomfortable situations. This Houston offense is bad. I mean, I know TCU's defense has struggled, but from a stats perspective, this Houston offense is really bad. If the TCU defense has issues tonight, then – and by issues, I mean like Houston just scoring a lot of points. Then I will be raising some real alarm bells uh, when I get to go live this evening. But that's the first key. Secondly, the offense is going to have to be efficient. This offense has been really good this year. I would say borderline elite. There have been times in just about every game where they've had some sort of lull. UCF, really, the majority of the second half. SMU, those are a couple drives, turning the ball over, basically getting into a 17-0 hole before they could really get after it and do anything. Um. You know, Stanford in the first half, not being able to finish drives, some turnovers as well. So take advantage when you have the football. And Houston's defense has been good. Their secondary has been pretty solid. You could argue this is the best pass defense they've seen this year. Kansas had a lot of guys before the season that were rated really highly at corner and safety and appeared like they had talent, but they really weren't able to put that together. And going to that ball game, I was listening to, or I was watching the Carter boys episode and I heard Brian Estridge and his kind of like cold open to the broadcast last week saying this might be the most talented or the best secondary they face all year talking about Kansas. I think Houston's going to be up there. Now TC has been able to throw the ball at everybody. Josh Hoover has been great. Jack Besh is second in the nation in receiving yards. This is also a a big, physical Houston defensive front. So can you continue some of the success you had against KU running the ball against a team that hangs their hat on shutting that down? Now, they made some adjustments with the O-line last week. Uh, So that's a problem, right? Like, or not a problem, excuse me. They made some adjustments to the O-line that helped them out. Ben Taylor Whitfield got some run in place of Mike Nichols. They had Remington Strickland out there more. So we'll see if if that continues. And yeah, we'll just we'll see how they shuffle that around. And then the the other aspect of the run game that they adjusted last week, getting Jeremy Payne involved. Right. That was that was fantastic. Um, and so it was it was fun to hear or see him thrive and get some things going, both running the ball, catching the ball and then blocking out the space. And then finally, I think getting off to a fast start's a big deal. And I, I say this often. I hate to harp on it, but one consistent issue through the three years that Sonny has been here, for whatever reason, team just doesn't seem to get out of the gate how they need to. Last week against KU, you had a turnover on the first drive and you give up a touchdown in four plays. 
Offense does go down and score. KU scores again, but you're, you're down 14-7. You're down 7 nothing. Now it's not 17 nothing like it was against SMU. To their credit, like they were able to right the ship pretty quickly. But once again, just early on in the ball game, not quite able to get where you need to be. And I think this week with this particular Houston team, Um, they're struggling, right? And so you don't want to give them any confidence. If you allow them to, to score some early points, if the offense goes through some three and outs and they're able to hang around, then you might be in for a dogfight for four quarters. I honestly think, man, if this offense can hum early in the ballgame, if you jump out to a 14 nothing lead, against a team that's struggling mightily offensively and is not built to throw the football, then that effort, that intensity might start to wane a little bit, and that's when you jump in and have an opportunity to really get after this Houston team. So that's that's my challenge to the team as a whole, but really I think a lot of it falls on the coaching staff. Can you get these guys ready to play? Sonny says it all the time. Be the team that's more excited to get out there and play football. And I'm not sure what the crowd's going to be like tonight because I know Friday nights are kind of tough. But get the crowd involved. Get them behind the eight ball and force them to play catch up throughout the whole game. That, that'll, be, uh, that'll be a huge key as well. So TCU, Houston tonight, kickoff at 630. Uh, it'll be fun to see the Frogs get out there and and play and hopefully get to four and two before the bye week. When we come back, um, I'll talk about the coaching staff some more, Sonny, and another key to this football game, but really for the program as a whole. That's coming up here on Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day. All right, I talk to you about them frequently. I talk to you about them frequently. Excuse me there. I, I think I hit the uh, – the transition slide there twice, but FanDuel, five dollar bet, one five dollar bet, get you two hundred dollars in bonus bets on the FanDuel app or FanDuel.com. TCU fifteen and a half point favorites tonight. Over under is fifty one. You can bet on FanDuel.com or the FanDuel app. Again, one five dollar bet, get you two hundred dollars in bonus bets. NFL games, college football, Major League Baseball, playoffs going on right now. Sadly, my Rangers are not involved, but there's multiple opportunities, multiple sports to bet on on the FanDuel app or FanDuel.com. If you ever wondered, man, what would it be like to, to experience that, to kind of dip my toe in the sports betting waters, you can do that with FanDuel. It's safe, secure. It's America's number one sports book, FanDuel. It's where the game starts. Okay, rolling along here on a Friday early afternoon, getting ready for TCU in Houston tonight at 6.30. So Doug reached out to me on Twitter. He said, he was talking about Sonny Dykes. He said, Sonny Dykes career record, 92 and 74 through today. If you take his power five record, of 22 and 15, I think was 70 and 59. And then he took away the 12 and year, 12 and 0 start in year one at TCU. And his career record, if you take that away, it's 58 and 59, the power five head coach. And he just doesn't see the vision here with Sonny. Well, first off, um, I don't think you can take away those things. I guess I get what your what your point is, but the 12 and 0 start in 2022, they won 12 games. Like, yeah, there was some good fortune involved. There's always good fortune involved when you have an undefeated regular season. But they won those ball games. And I'm not I'm not personally loving this narrative of like those were Gary's players. I said this Parker Ainsworth yesterday. Those are Gary's players. I think there was some toughness instilled in them from that coaching staff that carried over. I think that was a group that was hungry to win. But, guys, let's be fair here. 
they were five and seven in 2021. And if you take out a heck of a performance by Chandler Morris against Baylor, that was a four and eight football team that got waxed by Oklahoma State. They got waxed by Kansas State. They were just bad. And Sonny and his assistants came in and they flipped it immediately. And yeah, they they walked into a, a good situation from a talent perspective, but the previous regime wasn't able to get that talent. Like they weren't able to maximize it. Sonny did that. Now, that being said, when he took the job or when he got the job, I thought he was a guy that could get TCU to a bowl game quickly. I didn't know if he was the type of coach that could make TCU into a consistent contender in the Big 12 because of some of the you know, skeptical things I knew about him, which were teams weren't always known for being physical. Defense was a secondary thing, right? But the beauty of it is we're going to get to see week to week what happens here. And I do think it means something that they bounced back against Kansas last week. Now, my biggest complaint with just the program right now and kind of where they are and how they're built and their identity is – you got to find a way to play clean football. And we've talked about like complimentary football, right? Along with that, it, it just seems like this group hasn't quite figured out. It's like one week, okay, we've eliminated the penalties. That's great. But we turned the ball over twice. <laughs> okay, we, we, we didn't turn the ball over, but we had a lot of penalties. Against Stanford, it was all the above. They had a lot of penalties and some turnovers, but fortunately, they found a way to win. They still – had a big drive there at the end of the ball game to win. I don't know if this group is talented enough to go win the Big 12 this year. I'm not predicting it to happen right now. I don't think they're playing at that high of a level. That being said, I do think this league is wide open. I'm not saying TC's going to be the one to emerge from it. But – Colorado is a pretty flawed team. I mean, they they have serious talent at the skill positions. They also struggle up front in the trenches. Kansas State stumbled out of the gates early. Oklahoma State's 0-2. Utah, we don't know what really is going on with the Cam Rising situation. I don't think Arizona is as good as they were last year, but they look like a solid team. To me, this is kind of the make or break point in the season. We're halfway through the year. If you go play a complete football game tonight and you win, not that that is like super impressive because of the opponent, but just giving yourself some confidence. And then, you know, I don't know if they're able to do it, but you have some time to prepare for the team that going into the year, everybody thought was going to be the, the big bad wolf in the conference in Utah. And, I don't know what's going to happen with Cam Rising. I mean, he, he gets out there and warms up. So I would think he would probably be available for that ball game, but who knows? You know, Oklahoma State and Arizona at home. I think there's opportunities for TCU to pull off some upsets, but they have to play clean football. They have to get better up front. And some of those problems, I'm not sure if you can fix it in the middle of the season. I think it's going to be more – can you survive? Can you win some games? Can you get to a bowl game? And then going into next year, going into 2025, are you in a better place with a lot of returners to really make a run? It remains to be seen. So I see your point. You know, aside from that great year that he had where they won a playoff game, Sonny has been traditionally a dude that wins seven or eight ball games, But – I mean, he did win a playoff game. Like, I I think there is – I know that we're looking at, you know, you got to look at the whole picture. And you, you have to say, okay, what has he done everywhere he's been? Um, but he has had unprecedented success at different stops. And so, I don't know if he's the guy that's going to figure it out. I had huge questions after the last two weeks. I don't think all those were answered because they won against Kansas. I'm not that naive. I'm not uh, 
like I'm not a mouthpiece for the university. I, I want to be pro TCO and be positive on here. But if things aren't positive, I'm not going to lie to you guys about it. And you're, you're smart. Like you watch football, you understand what's going on. There's a lot for this group to work on, but I do think there's time for them to fix some of these things and get better as the year goes on. And it's up to the coaching staff to figure that out and make that happen. We'll wrap things up when we come back here on Lockdown Horn Frogs, your team every day. All right, another one of our great sponsors, Game Time. Let me pull up the Game Time app right now. If you need last-minute tickets to this TCU-Houston game, they're going for as low as $22 in the 400 section and $19 in the 400 section. But, you know, in the end zone, 200 level, 100 level, 28 bucks. It's all available on the Game Time app. I make it easy for you. Game Time, download it today. Um, use the promo code LOCKEDONCFB for $20 off your first order. Again, that's LOCKEDONCFB for $20 off your first order. Game time. They make the process easy for you. Official ticket dealer of the Locked On Network. On yesterday's episode, we had a crossover edition with uh, Parker Ainsworth from Locked On Cougs. And one thing that he brought up that I didn't really consider was the Dana Holgerson angle of this game. And, of course, you know. Houston fans are not huge fans of, of Dana because he struggled pretty mightily. And I remember that being a big deal when they hired him. Like, it was it was shocking at the time because West Virginia, he had had success there. Now, you could argue, like, he kind of got out before everybody started to turn on him. But he was at a Power 5 school. And I'm sure, like, when he took the job, they sold him on the idea of, hey, we can – we think we can make this jump eventually – to playing big time college football, but still he had to have the faith to take it. And, um, you know, it didn't work out. I'm not sure how much his expertise is going to help this week. I mean, he knows Donovan Smith. Well, uh, some of those guys, the big time players, man, Jack, the wide receiver was around when he was there. So I'm sure he's got some nuggets of wisdom that he can pass along with the defensive staff. But yeah, I mean, really since the start of the season, haven't heard much from those guys. Don't expect to. I'm talking about Todd Graham and Dana Holgers and the analyst. Dana's working with the defense, actually doing some advanced scouting. Todd flipping that, working with the offense, doing some advanced scouting. Uh, but hopefully he's got some good insight on personnel, who this team is, what they're doing. They're running a different system now, but uh, a lot of the same players. And we'll see if that is helpful for TCU this evening. Uh, ben says, always look forward to playing Houston just for talks with Parker. Love him. Yeah, Parker's a great dude. Um, it's good to hear from him. There's also, if you, if you're ever curious, the big 12 squad show is available. I think they recorded on Tuesdays, but it's available on Thursday. Somebody asked today why I'm not on that. Um, that's like right in the middle of my kid's soccer practice. And I just, I'd rather, I, I want to be there. So that's, I, I love working with those guys. I love recording with them, but family obligations keep me away from, from doing it. Um, but it's a great show and they have a lot of fun previewing games, talking about it. And then another user says, great episode. Insightful to hear TCU opponents from their podcast host. Yeah, I always like doing the crossover of editions. It's fun to uh, chat with the guys and get their perspective. I was on campus last night for the 60th anniversary of KTCU. And I ran into a guy named Preston. He said he listens to the show. So thank you, Preston. Should have done that off the top. But if you're still tuned into the episode, I appreciate you saying hi. And thank you for listening. Thanks to everybody for listening and watching. We'll have a post-game show at some point tonight. I'll update you on Twitter. I'm at Simcox Steven. That's the best place to follow me. It's Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast.